Hi y'all, I'm Allison. To build my TBR for April, I have to deal with all the little loose ends, all the little bits and bobs, and that would be my extra reading challenges that I do each month. So we're gonna have buzzword, story graph randomizing, and spin the rec wheel to find which book y'all recommended I'll be reading. Now normally we would also have Elzia Adventures, but Nasilla will be busy at school. She'll be at a really academy doing the magical readathon. So we won't be doing that one today. We've only got three to get through. Let's start off with buzzword. The prompt for the month is nature. Now I always have a hard time with this one. I don't know if it's just the nature theme in general, but whenever this prompt comes up, my brain just shuts down. Cause it's like, well, what counts? Cause I'll be like, well, wind and all that, that's weather, right? Does that count for nature? Does it not? I don't know. And, and then a moon, I don't know if that counts or is that just sky and space? No clue. So I stuck with uh, earth, <laughs> things that are ground down here, growing, I, I figure nature, right? Let me know what y'all, what do y'all do with this? Because every time it comes up, I always overthink it, surprise. So anyway, long way of saying to find out what I'll be reading for buzzword, we're gonna play one of three. So I have picked out three books that fit the prompt. We will stack those in a particular order and then spin a wheel to find out which one I'll be reading. Now, let me know if y'all disagree on whether these count for nature or not. I've got the next one in Clive Kessler, Iceberg. I figure that's nature. That's, you know, big things on earth, right? Comes from the ocean. It's gotta be nature. Thinnick of the rock, rock, earth, you know, nature, full of rocks and a forgery of roses. Roses, again, it grows out of the earth. So, nature, yeah, so, me and mine need to overcomplicate. Anyway, yeah, these are my three contenders. So all we gotta do now is a draw from our little criteria jar. That's getting very empty. I think I've got pieces of paper everywhere. This is gonna give us some kind of a perimeter. Genres, okay. I don't know if this is going to work. Alphabetical, A to Z. So I have 10 genres that I classify my books in for my rating journal. So I'm going to see if these three come from different genres. Otherwise, I'm going to have to redraw. So Iceberg, I would classify as a thriller. Fantasy, fantasy. So that's not going to work. So or we're just going to set this one aside. By the way, not all of my ideas are always good ones. <laughs> okay, here, we'll try this one. And we've got, oh, I hate these. <laughs> Number of reviews on Goodreads. Okay, reviews, not ratings. So, and then it's going to be from lowest amount of reviews to highest. So let me look it up and see how basically popular these books are. Okay, these turned out to be what I expected. And I did look for reviews, not ratings, because in the past I've of flubbed that before. So Iceberg has 639 reviews. Then Forgery of Roses has 1,464. And Finnegan of the Rock has 4,119. So lowest, middle, highest. So now I have to go back to the computer. We pull up our wheel and find out which of those I'll be reading. Okay, let's see which one we get. I kind of want Iceberg to continue the series, but I'm not going to get it. <laughs> All right, actually, I'm not upset by this. This is the Forgery of Roses. A portrait is worth a thousand lives, and I think this is like a gothic fantasy. This was in an owl crate box. I haven't read it yet. I've had it for a while. Gorgeous sprayed edges. Oh, we have a reverse dust jacket. That's pretty. And we also have foiling on the hardcover. I think this is a dark gothic fairy tale. Oh, that's right. We've got portrait mag magic in this one. Yeah, she's an artist whose portraits alter people's real life bodies. So there's a talent that she hides. Because otherwise people would kidnap, blackmail, or worse in order to control it. And then the governor's wife discovers her little secret and she threatens to expose Myra if she doesn't complete 
a special portrait that would resurrect the governor's dead son. I would assume that is a definite no-no, because, you know, everybody knows you can't bring back the dead. So once she arrives, it becomes clear the boy's death was no accident. And there's danger lurking in the glittering halls. And she can't do the portrait until she knows what really happened. So this is going to be like a mystery and magic and gothic. And I'm really looking forward to this. Let me look and see when this box came out. Okay, this is kind of sad. March of 2022. So I've had this puppy for two years just waiting. Which is why I canceled my subscription boxes a long time ago. All right, so this will be my buzzword. I am happy to add this to my TBR and it's not terribly long. Moving right along, we need to find out what book I'll be reading for the Story Graph Challenge. Now, this is one that is set up with, by a lady that I do some buddy reads off on the side with from time to time. And each month you play with your Story Graph to Read pile, changing the filters or the criteria for how it's sorted and pick a random book that way. So let's go over to my computer, find out what the parameters are for April and see which book it's going to lead me to. This one typically has a lot of counting. Hopefully I won't have to go through too many screens to find it. Okay, let's go over here. By the way, here's the name of the f a challenge if you would care to join in. And Molly B13 is the one who hosts this one. So here's all the rules, again, if you're wanting to do it. So we're just going to scroll down here for April and find out what we got to do. Sort your books by title A to Z and divide your books on your TBR by two. Uh-oh. And then choose that number book on your list or one that within five of your middle number. Oh, God. We don't use a randomizer this time. We just scroll to the middle. Oh, holy crap. Molly, this one's kind of mean. Do you know how many are on my list? Okay, let's go find out. Search and filter. Okay, so uh, this has actually been read. Why is that still there? I shouldn't be there. Okay, so let's, I'm going to filter this first because I'm only going to use books that I own. And I'm also going to exclude my reference. And big on tags on all of my so we'll check out all reference books as well so that might drop this number from 1472 to what will it give me oh that helped <laughs> 1401 so I have to count 700 books I can't count 700 my computer will freeze how am I gonna do this okay so we got to make it titles A to Z I can't go in the middle. That would be book 700. It loads seven, it loads 10 books at a time. So I would have to wait for the screen to load 70 times to find that book. Okay, what if, we're not gonna go over to Goodreads. I am so behind on Goodreads. I haven't even put anything in, but I am very good about keeping both sites the same. I don't have the tags on here as thorough as I do on the other one. Okay, yeah, there's only 13 reference books. So I'm going to, we're going to do it through here, although my all is 2,000. Oh, okay, we're going to do it through here. And I think this doesn't have any like wish list books on it, which Storygraph does. That's why I clicked that to own, that I own. So here's what we'll do. I can find book 700 in here much easier. So let's do, we want it by, can I do a title? Yes. Ascending. Okay. And, oh, okay. If we put it 100 per page. Now I can just go to the seventh page and this is book 700. That was much easier. <gasps> okay. That's incredible. That could not be any better. 
So thank you, Molly. This is beyond incredible. This feels like cheating. For one, it was so easy to do it that way instead of scrolling through Storygraph. Because every 10 that I scroll, then I get the blue circle of death. And you have to wait for it. And it just gets slower the more I do. It may just be because I use it on desktop and it might be much easier on the phone. But I wasn't going to go 700. So doing it on good, good reads worked out. And look. This is incredible because with Aurelium this month, this will really help. And I absolutely love this series, 43 Oak Cemetery Road. I will be reading book five, Hollywood Dead Ahead. So we have Olive C. Spence. She's a ghost. And Ignatius B. Grumpley and little Seymour. They all live together in this old Victorian house in Illinois. And they correspond through letters, email, and notes slid underneath the door. So I guess this time they are going to Hollywood. There must be, they, these three are right, like a mystery that comes out through serials. So letters or pages are sent to their subscribers. Like every month they get a new chapter or something like this. So I wonder if maybe their latest book was picked up by Hollywood and they're going out there to film their book, turn it into a screenplay. Anyway, this will be fun, awesome, and it's always a good time. It's full of different letters and newspaper articles, multimedia. So if you've never heard of this series, then you probably haven't watched one of my videos in a while. And you really should pick it up because it's so much fun. Old 43 Old Cemetery Road, I believe was the name of the first one. And oops, I just lied to you because it's dying to meet you. This is the first book. So incredible. I absolutely love it. And this one tells the story of how Seymour and Ignatius B. Grumpley end up living in this old Victorian manor home. Okay, so nice. Okay, only thing left to do is to pull up the rec wheel and find out which one of y'all's recommendations I will be reading this month and I will do a dedicated video for. Let's go back to the computer once again and pull up the rec wheel. Okay, I have no idea where I was, so we're just going to have to pick things up because I had to pause to play a game of where's the cell phone. So, spoiler, it was hidden in the kitchen drawer with all of the towels. Yeah, thank God the battery wasn't dead because that was the only way I found it was by calling it. And we were playing a game of, you know, like hot and cold because it kept ringing and I'd get farther away. Finally discovering it was inside the drawer, that was, that was a little tricky. Anyway, I won. <laughs> we found the phone. Okay, let's get back to it. We were doing uh, the rec wheel. This is a spinner wheel, surprise, surprise, that I built using books that y'all recommended. I asked everybody to name a one book and to add some stopping points along with why you picked the book. And uh, this wheel was the result of that video. So every month I read a book from it. Let's go find out which book I will be reading in April and who suggested it. Are you ready? Okay, let's see what we get. Lag. Really? Come on. Oh my god, the suspense. Who won? <laughs> Oz, Gobelino, London, and a scourge of pleasantries. Okay, I have no idea what this is. I'm going to look this one up. I am intrigued by the title. A scourge of pleasantries. Okay, I'm assuming some kind of a satire. Let's go look this up and find out what it is. Whew, I saved it. I had to perform CPR on my phone and plug in the charger because y'all were flatlining. Okay, battery's going again. And... Storygraph. Storygraph is taking its sweet time, but I can tell this is going to be a lighthearted, funny mystery series. Yes. And Gobelino London is our main character, apparently. P.I. Okay. I think finally loaded. So let me see what this one's actually about. The main character, Gobelino, is a cat and a human companion. So it's going to be a mystery. The cat's the main character. I know there was somebody who said that their, I think it was the boyfriend, husband, really loves mysteries with cats being the, the first, you know, the main character. And we had the Rita Brown. So this is another one. I'll have to see if I can dig through comments and find out who that was and turn them onto this series because 
I am super excited about I've never heard of this one. This is going to be fun. And I think they're going to be looking for a missing book. Oh, okay, another layer. So it says that the woman dressed in Doc Martens gave him a job to find a book. Seems like it was going to be an easy job. Turns out the woman is a sorceress and the book is the book of power and it doesn't want to be found. That is all I need to know. It's going to be urban fantasy, magic, a cat detective with this human companion, lighthearted, humorous. That is it. This is so up my alley. It's not even funny. Thank you, Oz, for recommending this one. I can't wait. I can't wait to read it and do a video on it. So I will dig back in the original video, find out which pages you wanted me to pause on, and be sure and let me know, is this one you've already read or is this just a series you've been curious about? All right, so these are my three extras. I feel like I won a jackpot because these three, I'm excited for all of them. And these are always a priority for me because I want to get them checked off on my reading journal. They have a dedicated page to them. Speaking of which, Lily says hi. Today is like March 29th. I still haven't completed my 2024 reading journal. I think it's almost done. I think all I need is my title page. So that video should happen sometime in April. Hopefully, maybe, I don't know. All right, y'all keep an eye out because next step should be hopefully be my TBR for Aurelium. I gotta do that. I haven't even watched G's video. I have no idea what Nasilla and I are gonna be in for it, but I will be randomly choosing my books, probably playing one of three again. The fake cards will be back. I'll be time blocking my school schedule. So there's gonna be lots of fun mayhem and hair pulling probably in April. So if you would like to be a part of that, be sure and subscribe and I hope to see you very, very soon. Y'all have a good one. Oh, don't forget, if you want to add a book to the rec wheel, do so down below. Title, author, why you chose it, if you've read it, and pick four random stops for my video. Can you tell I had caffeine? Okay, bye. <laughs>